Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How are y'all doing? This is another video. Same shirt, same apron. Mama's wearing the same clothes too, but we are filming a different video today. We just got through making the uh, onion, the uh, Badaya onion cornbread, and we just had it for lunch, and it was very good. Mama is like a... <laughs> <laughs> She is cocked and ready to go. I'm going to hurry. Uh, Mama's going to make some cornbread and some biscuit bread, and she can't wait to get this oil in here. So I'm going to go ahead and let, let y'all see her. <laughs> Mama, hurry. Get that oil in there. Now, they, wait, Mama. I want to show them these skillets. These skillets don't have a thing in them. These are clean right out of the oven. Look at that. That's not been oiled. That is from cornbread. When you see a skillet, like this, and if you ever at an estate sale or you're anywhere and you see a skillet, see how that light's reflecting in there? You buy that. That's a good season. That's what they call seasoned. Good seasoned cornbread skillet. And that's what that is, and that's what this one is too. Look at that. Those don't, don't have anything in them. There goes my oil. And she puts about this much oil. I'd say that's what, two tablespoons? I don't know. I just pour. That much right there is what she says. <laughs> So you put that in there, and you roll it around in your seasoned skillet, and you put this in the oven, and this is going to make delicious cornbread and delicious biscuit bread or pone bread. And Mama's going to mix this up some, and this is what we're going to have. We'll do the same thing for Thanksgiving, but for now... Well, it may not for us. It may not be, Mama. Who knows? For now, though, this is going to be Sunday lunch tomorrow. No matter when you see this video, it'll probably be Sunday before you see it, or Monday. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, this Saturday evening here, the day before Sunday, on Labor Day weekend, and we are getting ready for tomorrow's lunch, which will be turkey and dressing, mashed potatoes and gravy. That's it. We're not overdoing it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all we'll eat. Cranberry sauce, turkey and dressing, and mashed potatoes with gravy. And that will be that will be uh, lunch tomorrow. Maybe a vegetable. We might throw a vegetable in there just to make it look good. If my aunt was still alive, she would have wanted some of this. We would definitely have taken her some and shared with her, my aunt Eleanor. Uh, she was my mama's oldest sister, and she loved nothing better. Nothing. I don't know of anything she liked any better than uh, homemade cornbread dressing. Every time I made it, I have to take this. Mama, I'm going to run off and get well, some come, flour. Come in here, Mama. It says I'm getting ready to go to a pile so you can run. Okay. I'll uh, right so that's what we're going to do. Mama's going to finish stirring this up. and You're going to do palm bread. Yeah. And biscuit. Biscuit, I mean, bread, and cornbread. And cornbread or palm bread. We call it biscuit mm -hmm. palm bread. So let her run and get some flour. I can't keep her lit today. She I've is... got to go to the pantry to get some flour. She's, Didn't she... know you'd empty the container. I did yesterday morning, Mama, making your breakfast, I making some it. biscuits. Y'all hold, hold on just a second. All right, Mama's pulled herself together. She's got her flour here. White lily. White lily flour. Mm -hmm. Self rising white lily flour. Yeah, that's my flour. Now, look what I did to my apron. Mama. I'm not like messy, Marvin. I'll empty this in my container in a minute. I'm just going to get this down here. Alright, so this is. That's one cup. One cup of white lily, self rising. And you, this may not be a cup because this is my been my flour cup for I don't know how many years. When you see old recipes though, old recipes when they call for a cup of flour, they was using a cup just like that. I can't remember mommy having all of the measuring cups. Measuring cups and all that stuff. She had uh, uh, we just use what was handy, and that's what I've done through the years. But now, when I do baking, I do do measuring better now. And this is in my butter thing. I'm going to use soft butter. 
Yeah. And this we leave out and over there near the stove. Tablespoon. And uh, it um, it stays fine in this. Yeah. We don't have no problem. People ask that most of the time. Was that? But it's pure salted butter. Salted butter. Real butter. And then we have our butter bell that we keep on the table, and it always has butter in it, and it has a little bit of water in the bottom, and that keeps the, it airtight. So you've always got soft butter for your toast that way. Mama's using her blending fork. Somebody asked what that was the other day. What's that fork Mama's using? It's, it's a blending blender fork. fork. You can go to our Amazon link and it is on there. I think you can get a set of two of them uh, from Amazon. If you'll open that other buttermilk up for me. This new one? Yeah, I'm going to use most of this. Yes, ma'am, right now. That'll save me a few minutes. And I don't measure I just mix and stir a lot of bacon is done by the eye you gotta you know what you're looking for you know what you when you see it you'll know where if it's for the consistency you like mama you didn't tell me I fixed your breakfast yesterday morning I come over early you fixed breakfast I did and you made soup the night before I did we had Breakfast and you shake that so I did, I shook it. Thank you. With as much as I could and it full. Yep. It's that thick again. It's thick thick, ain't it? Yeah. You, you just, can't shake it in it full. Just bought that today. So. It's fresh. It just makes that heavy cream. I mean it's it's whole coast. It's whole coast food. Now you don't have that with the other. That's good. Um and I made you sausage and bacon. Yes, you done. And I made you apples. You did so Spoiled good. Spoiled you right. That's what I've done. Sausage gravy. And sausage gravy. Yeah. Maggie even got a little sausage gravy. I ain't eat that good since the last time you cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a breakfast person. I like to get up early, but I got a bit early. He, uh, when he was little... He would not eat breakfast, but his daddy never did like breakfast and eat it. But after he was with me so long, he liked it because I was bo raised on getting up and eating breakfast. My mommy believed you eat breakfast before you went to school. She would not let us go to school hungry. So now I've made this thinner because it's not biscuits. It's going into that uh, skillet just like this. So that's... Let's, let's hold it up here. You hold it up while I get my skillet. So that's the consistency. It's it's thicker than pancake batter. Oh, yeah. It'll still hold onto the spoon, but you see there, it's, it's uh, not like you'd want to roll out for biscuits. It's very uh, moist, very wet. I'd have to put another cup of flour in that to get it to, I could make a biscuit out of it. But that is the consistency you want for palm bread because you're just going to pour it out in this skillet. My pot holder was too thin at first when I had it. You're going to pour you're, it up. You're just going to. Mama Smith won't talk to you. No, you're no. just going to pour it up in this skillet. So and y'all can't see because my hand's in the way. Well, they, they just stopped. Okay. Well. Phones are ringing all over the house. Probably somebody calling about your car insurance. I Hello. You see how this is bubbling around the edges. That's because that skillet was in a good hot oven. Some people I've seen that don't put this skillet in the oven. They don't heat it. And theirs okay. turns out okay. I don't know if this is just a... I don't know if this is just a thing we do, but it does. I know this for a fact. It does make the, it does cook it and make that a little bit crispier. Just put that in there. I'm going to stir the cornbread right up in there. So that's going to be the biscuit bread or the pone bread. A lot of people, we've done this before. And if you're wondering why we're doing it again, it's just that's what we're doing today. We, we don't have an agenda. We don't plan. You know, it's like, oh, we need to do a video on this. If we've not done a video on something, sometimes we'll say we want to do a video on it. But we just share with you all whatever we're doing. Whatever we're up to, we pull you all right in on it. Ours. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and we don't edit. Can you tell that? <laughs> Sorry about that. You wiped the meal off your bed. That's all right, Mama. Just a little dust heap in here. <laughs> and this, I got my cup. I dropped and broke my old cup. It was in my cornmeal. But this has been in here for years, too. This is... <laughs> and then you got a white one with a gold rim around it for yeah. the sugar. It's all... So let's tell them what you just put in there. A cup and a half? Yeah, cornmeal. And I... Uh, cup and a half of cornmeal? Yeah, and I need just a little flour in here. Not a lot in here because this is going in good. And this will be a little thick. Because you want plenty of center part of the cornbread. Yeah. We're glad to have y'all here with us in the kitchen today. We enjoy it. Saturdays, we usually will do a couple of um, coffee time videos because we're usually, we've always, Mama's always cooked up stuff on Saturday for Sunday to make it a little simpler. So we don't, when you go to church, you don't want to come home from church and then have to start cooking you lunch. So if you get a little bit done on Saturday and a little bit of Sunday morning, then you are uh, ahead of the game. Mama, I'm trying to chase her down. She's, she's Mama, sorry. your bow's in the way. I'm cooking. I was just checking my egg. Better than some people that did it while ago. There's my egg standing up nice and pretty. And you see, I put this right in this biscuit. Bowl. Mama, why don't you, since you're an egg checking expert, why don't you tell me what you're checking for and why that's well, a thing? I always taught, was taught to check them. We always had our and own. And checking them means if, if the yolk, put them in a bowl, a little bowl like this. If the yolk don't stand up, round up pretty, if it flattens plum out, the egg's old. But if it stands up round and pretty, your egg, I need my buttermilk back. Your egg is good. And when you raise your own chickens, and there's, we always had roosters and stuff, and sometimes, you know, they have stuff in them, the egg, where they've been fertilized. Or the blood or something. The blood or something. But most of the time, not. Most of the time, they're good eggs and fresh eggs, but that's yeah. what you call checking them. Now, if you was going to put five eggs in there, you would check each egg individually in that little bowl, look at it, make sure it looked good, not cloudy, not milky, no little specks of blood or shell or anything. And yeah. you would put one in there, check the other one, to the next, to the next. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, farm, we used to, that's what they always call checking the eggs. Mama's always check the eggs. Sometimes I don't. She was throwing that at me while I go Well, we don't the have the chickens raising them now like we did. And we do. These are farm eggs. Well, it, we buy these from our cup. You keep stealing my corn, my Mom, buttermilk. Yeah, I have to keep moving down in front of the camera because you stick it in front of you. They can't see a thing you're doing. Here, I'm going to put it right okay, over put here. It over there. <laughs> I'm I know through get, now. I know you get tired of that. You I'm through now. It. Now this is just the same mixture she'd mix that for cornbread. Yeah, this is what this is cornbread that I would put on the table to eat. I put an egg and I put a meal and a little flour. You don't always put flour. Not most of the time I do. It's supposed to be keep you from choking so bad when you eat yeah. milk and bread. <laughs> it does. That's an old saying. If you put flour in your cornbread, it will keep you from choking if you drink if eat you eat milk and bread. bread. But I choke no matter which way. <laughs> and if you don't know about that, if you like cornbread and you put sweet milk or, or buttermilk, it'll choke you. You'll get strangled on it real easy. So you have to be careful with it. It's I don't know why, but they claim if you put a little flour in it, a tablespoon or so, then it doesn't choke you. I've got too Ooh, much. Mama, that is hot. I know it, and I've got too much oil in that. Yes, you do, Mama. I can tell. What happened? It grew. Not happy at pouring it, I guess. I was talking to you. It's all my fault, I'm sure, Mom. I'm sure it was. That this skillet is, is hot. Is, this is like your daddy's cornbread. <laughs> with me. That skillet is hot. She's pouring that oil over there in our oil reserve. 
good clean oil. I must have been thinking I was fixing it for you, Daddy, because it was, whew, when I set that down. That's a lot of oil. Now, here it is. Now, watch this and listen. It's a doing a little. I've had it out too long. You hear that sizzle? You see that sizzle? That's what you want when you got good hot skillet, good oil in there. And it's already cooked the edges, around the edges. It's already starting to get that crust going. And that's what you want. And I don't measure nothing. I'm sorry. Bang, bang, bang with it. I know. Now, if y'all weren't here, you would have been there able to hear that outside. Ding, 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 ding. I used to always hear that sound of that spoon hitting that uh, cast iron skillet. And I thought, Mama's making cornbread because I hear it. Oh, I just. And that's it, folks. That into is. The oven she goes. That is cornbread and palm bread that she's going to make for our um, dressing. And what we'll do with that, we'll show you when we get ready to do it. What we will do with that is we will let it cool just a little bit and we will crumble it up. But first, we've got some prep work to do. We've got some celery to prepare and we've got some onions to prepare and some butter and some sage. Mm. Good stuff. So y'all just hang on a minute. We'll be right back with the rest of the goodies. It's going to be a good thing. Y'all will like it. If you never had it, I recommend it. Mama's got me here on the chore board. Now I'm going to start a controversy right now, I'm sure. We don't always string our celery. If we're going to cut it up in long strips to eat, like maybe on a um, charcuterie board or something, if we're fixing for uh, put to dip on or something like that, we do string it. And I'll show y'all how. Cut these ends off. You just want to get under the edge like this. Take your knife. You see that? And just rather cut up under the edge and you pull and look you pull all those strings off now that's wonderful and some of y'all will do this for your dressing and for your soups and other things and that's great if that's what you want to do when we're cutting it up for dressing or something we're going to cook or soup if you cut it up in small little pieces there's really no need to have to string it because those strings aren't going to be doing anything. So you just cut it small enough and you don't have to worry about um, stringing it if you don't want to. That's just our opinion. Now some of y'all may comment and say, oh, I would never serp it unstrung. I've never had a problem with it. It's never had a, a guest of ours that said, boy, you should have strung that celery. Never found a string in anything we cooked. Because if you cook it and you cut it up small enough, then stringing it is not necessary. Is what we have found. Right, Mama? Yeah. Mama, Mama will even agree with me on that. So, I did string this piece. The strings are celery too. So, it's not going to hurt anything. But now, if you do have a long... If you're cutting up celery sticks or something... Um, then yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna run into the strings, and when people bite into it, you got them strings. And you don't want that. But if you're not gonna be serving it that way, especially if you're gonna cook it, those strings will cook down soft and tender, and you won't have any problem with them, in our opinion, and in our everything we've ever cooked or made. So that's just a little note. Try it for yourselves. Don't not string it, serve a minute. Like right. Yeah, if you're going to cut it in long strips for celery sticks, you'll want to string that. Or if somebody's going to be biting into it raw, you definitely want to string that. But I wouldn't feel with stringing it just for my meal. Uh, for my, Because see here, you can see where I've just chopped that up and there's no strings. Um, this, well, I strung that though, so I guess... Show in the next one. I'll show you the next one because that's not a good test. This one has not been strung. I like to take that white part off. Now if I was making a vegetable stock, and a lot of times I will save these 
and make vegetable stock out of it for soup, then I would do that. We've got so many bags of in the freezer now. Yeah, every time we cut up vegetables, we think, we need to set that for stock. I got about two bags of something else to do. A vegetable stock? Yeah. Uh, and you save the tops of that celery. Some people just don't like celery. But that is, um, can y'all see what I'm doing? So this has not been strung. This has not been strung. You can see there's really no problem. If you're just going to cut it in s small little pieces, you're not going to have any problem with strings any more than you would on the strung piece that I made. And you just cut them up. And then when they cook up, you're good to go. So we don't have to have a... <laughs> we, we know there's two ways of doing it. So don't get upset. You keep doing it the way you do it. But I'm just telling people who don't have a preference yet, we have found we don't have to. Mama never has done that. Have you, Mama? No. Not if I'm cutting it little. If you cut it little, you don't have to. It won't go to the top of the string if you cut it little. No. <laughs> string should have celery, then, ain't it, Mama? One other thing, I mentioned this in the other video. If you're cutting up an onion, the gases in the onion are looking for water. That's the reason they go to your eyes. And that's the reason your eyes burn. Now, I've heard all kinds of things. Uh, my aunt keeps her mouth closed. Says that keeps it from doing it, and I guess it does. I've heard other people say different things keep the onions from um, burning their eyes. Well, I had just seen this on Facebook or something. This is just a wet paper towel. Lay a wet paper towel near your cutting board, and when you are cutting up onions, they won't burn your eyes. The, the onion gases will find that wet paper towel instead of your eyeballs. And then, you don't have to worry about that. They make goggles, and you know, I think I've got some onion goggles here. But you don't see me wearing them, not because I'm too proud to wear them or nothing. It just, I ain't going to go look that up. You know, I ain't going to go, oh, where's them onion goggles? <laughs> where's them onion goggles at? So I know how I am. I know I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to grab it, cut it, and get it done. So that's how, how that becomes an issue with me. I just don't go find the gadget tree I have. But now some people probably are sitting there right now thinking, I use mine all the time and I love them. And that's great. And if you use them, I'm sure they work well for you. But mine wouldn't work too well for me sitting over in the drawer because I wouldn't go get them. Or I wouldn't think I had time to fool with that. So I'm just going to hurry and cut these up right quick. It won't be that bad. I tell you, the best way to keep onions from burning the eyes is sign the chore board to your son to cut up the onions. And they don't they, burn mama's eyes. And they do not burn my eyes. <laughs> so... Oh, Mama, you have got the answer. Yes, it's the best answer. Oh. They don't burn my eyes. They ain't burned mine in a while. <laughs> if they're here, they sure don't burn them. But if I'm by myself, they, I kind of cry a little. Mama gives out chores. Now, Mama's in charge. Sometimes Mama will say, you didn't let Mama talk. Well, Mama's busy doing some other stuff, and she's, she's in charge. Let me just tell you, her kitchen, her rules... She's in charge as you've watched her clean right up underneath me before. I can't stand a messy work out of this. There's a lot of things Mama can't stand. She don't want any anything not just right, Biggie Mama. Not in my kitchen. I'm sorry. But... Well, I don't have any kitchen. And this is all I'm going to do, folks. Now, normally... Um, I'd get the pear chopper out or I'd get something out and I'd chop up a bucket of these and this would be a, a big ordeal a big job but we're making a very small pan this is just gonna be we don't really want any leftovers if we can keep from it so this is all I'm gonna do I thought I got two onions out there but mom I don't think we need two onions in small dressing as you're making and uh, I'm going to do one more little rib of celery. And this is it. That's probably the, some of the smallest we've ever 
pulled together. Last year we made a big pan, even though it was just the two of us, because we wanted a bunch of leftovers. But we found out you got too tart. <laughs> yeah, you get tart. Now you can freeze it and use it. Uh, and like this, these leaves here, you can cook them in soup. Mmm. You can do all kinds of good things with them. Make you some V8 juice with them or something, and they're good. So I'm gonna do one more celery. Then I'm going to let Mama have the final say on these onions. Mama, what do you think? Is that enough onion? Uh, wouldn't hurt to. You want it onion flavor, don't you? That's a no. When she says it wouldn't hurt, that means well, get you some more I onion. I wouldn't hardly put that whole onion in What would you like, Mama? Half the well, onion? Half of it more. That would make us a good rich And then I'll use that other onion for omelet or something else. You want me to... How much, um, that chicken. omelet you made the other morning looked awful good. Yeah, you that was a good one. Peppers and you put to use. Anytime I cut, cut up stuff like this, if it calls for a cut and you got a cut in a half, I just put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the vegetable bin, or I'll put it in a Tupperware uh, bowl that's got a good air tight on it. And, uh, I use it for omelets, or you might just want to sprinkle a little onion on something you have, or you can, um, if you'll put, <laughs> if you like onions on your sandwiches, uh, if you'll put your salad dressing or your mayonnaise on your bread, you can take diced onion and peppers and put on that salad dressing side and it won't fall off while you're eating it or it don't on me. And uh, so you can use diced onions and diced peppers and stuff for a good time for a week or so. Can't you, Mom? Yeah, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. All right. Mama, if you ain't going to make no more stock, I guess you can throw all that in the way. Yeah. You don't want to save it for stock. No, we've got enough stock to... Float a boat. <laughs> to do a lot of uh, soups or whatever. So I'm going to leave half of this onion, and I'm going to cut this other half up just to have a little bit more onion flavor in there. And we will get this on the cooker. Just a second, Mom will be back with some chicken broth and creamy chicken soup and some sage and some butter. And we're going to put these in the microwave. We're going to show you a quick and easy way to cook your onions and your celery and everything for a dressing. It's wonderful. It's, it's fail proof. I mean, it, you just can't mess that kind of thing up. So, y'all, hold on just a second. Mama's going to. How's that cornbread coming, Mama? It's not brown yet. It likes a little bit more. Mama gets her biscuit bread out and her cornbread out. And we get all this started. Mm, I can already smell the smells. I love it. <laughs> all right. So now we have got all those onions, or that onion, in half chopped up. And uh, was that three ribs of celery I did, Mama? Three ribs, I think, or two or three. Three ribs of celery. I think that's right. And in this bowl, this is just a microwave-safe bowl, and we have got a quart of chicken broth that I froze and thawed. Yeah. And uh, poured it in there. And then she put a can of cream of chicken, a 10.5 ounce can of cream of chicken. Yeah. And that's it. That's all that's in there. So now we're going to add the onions and celery. That Oops. your wonderful son chopped up just to your yeah, perfection, to your specifications. He's so good. That's why onions don't burn my eyes. That's why onions don't bother Mama. But now that, I didn't have any burn in my eyes. I think that little white, or little um, paper, towel. paper towel wet like that does help. Okay, and then if you'll cut some butter off and put in. How much would you well, like? Well, put the, we'll put the spices in before we do that. So the spices we put in is mm -hmm. poultry seasoning. And it's just, uh, if you don't know what poultry seasoning is, it's good for chicken. But it's, um, let's see, the ingredients is uh, thyme and sage and uh, marjoram and rosemary, black pepper and nutmeg. Now, if you like your dressing real sagey, just put all sage. But we like to add the poultry seasoning because it does have all the other 
spices and flavors in it. And so. you can tether in there, can't you? Yeah, and I'm going to just sprinkle some on here, and I don't measure. But that's a teaspoon. Yeah, about it. And what I do is I cook this, and he's going to sprinkle me some sage. This is just plain old rubbing sage. And I'm going to put about, that's about a good tablespoon. And that will do till I get this cooked. And then when we get it in the big pot to mix it all together with the cornbread and stuff, uh, if it needs more, we'll take a little bite. And if it needs more, we'll put more. But this is all we're going to put in here right now. Well, I'm going to put a teaspoon of black pepper. You can always add mm. to it, but you can't take away. No salt because that soup has lots of salt. And if you cut off like a couple of pads or so of butter. How many tablespoons you need, Mama? About three or so. Four, three. One, two, three tablespoons right yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be good. So I'll give you one. And this is the way we do it for Thanksgiving or any time we make it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's Thanksgiving in September. That's right. We're One of y'all sent a gift card. Says you wanted me to get my Thanksgiving at the big store. And I appreciate that. That was sweet of you. Did mm -hmm. not have to do that. But we appreciate you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that was sweet. Very sweet. Very sweet. But we don't ever expect anybody to send us anything here at all. But y'all are so gracious and so wonderful. And you are blessing to us. So just just your comments, your sharing, and liking our page is blessing enough for us. But y'all, some of y'all just go above and beyond with gifts and and uh, don't put yourself out with for us. We are just glad to be here. And uh, we're plain old country folks. We're just plain old people. We, you don't have to. We don't have to have anything. We're just. I don't have to have brand names or fancy now, stuff. Mama, Sometimes your brain knows. Oh, yeah, I am picky on certain brands. <laughs> I do take it back. White Lily Flare is one of them, and McCormick's is another one you're pretty picky on. Yeah. I get some of that picky every once in a while when I bring in something that ain't just perfect. And uh, my peanut butter and my stuff that I... Look at this. This is... Not cake. Not cake. This is cornbread and biscuit bread. This is the pone bread that we were telling you about. And this is when you put it in that skillet. This is what you get. One big biscuit. <laughs> and look how golden brown on the bottom. That's but, why I'm going to start making my biscuits. So when you say, you don't need all that bread, I'm going to say, I just ate one biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> look how flaky and delicious this bread is. Let me cut off a little piece right here. This is biscuit bread. See, a wonderful. And it is so good. It has a little bit of a different flavor than biscuits. Uh, don't know how to explain it, but it is a little bit of a different flavor. Now all this is gonna be crumbled up or I wouldn't be cutting it, not without doing perfect triangles or something. Mama would have a fit. But since this is all got to be cooled and crumbled, she's all right. And that's the cornbread. See how good and moist it is. But this biscuit bread. Why don't you just turn it out, please? Look at that. And what you do is you will put this in a bowl and we'll crumble it all up and make it just right. And a lot of people don't use the outside part because they don't want that in their dressing. But I like that. I like to just, we just crumble every bit of this up. And you do want to pull it apart like I am now, if you're going to do it for dressing, and let it be cooling a little bit because you don't, spiced, you, can start <laughs> you don't want it to uh, gum up. You know, if you, if you do it hot, it'll get kind of gummy. So you want to peel it apart. And my hands are clean. I just washed them right before we come back on. You want to peel it apart, let it be cooling down good. And then it won't be gummy. Where we had it stacked up here, it'd be a while before that cornbread would cool. And that is hot. It just come out of the oven. So there's the biscuit bread. And that'll cool. You just lay it out to it cool. You can lay it out on a sheet pan or a, um, a dough board or something. But you want it to cool. 
So that breaking it up like that will help it to cool. And the cornbread, you can just cut it up just like this, spread it apart there, and it will cool as well. A lot of people uh, will stand for a long time, and I've seen people take the cornbread and make it just as fine as they can in their hands, and they don't want any chunks of any kind. I, I'm telling you, I don't have that kind of patience for one thing, but for another, when you put this hot liquid out of this microwave, and that's what Mama done, she put that in the microwave for about five minutes but she just wants it to come to a boil she wants all those flavors incorporated and let it all boil when you pour that hot liquid over this it will dissolve I have a friend who her mother would uh, and I guess her mother done it would uh, save cornbread for three or four weeks put it in a brown paper bag and leave it on the stove or on the on the stove sorry about that not on the stove you don't want to leave a brown paper bag on the stove ever would leave it on the kitchen table and she'd put her leftover cornbread or leftover biscuits in that brown paper bag and um, shake it every once in a while and let it dry out and then she would uh, put her broth and stuff over it and put make it up. So we were talking about it one time and she said she didn't know she had time to make dressing or not. And this was for Thanksgiving. It was first of November. I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, it takes two or three weeks to get some good cornbread together. And I said, we make our birds the same day. And she said, oh, I don't think I like that. So it's just what you're raised up doing. We've always made ours Thanksgiving morning or, or the night before Thanksgiving. And this is what we do. You get your cornbread, get your biscuit bread, and you put that hot broth over it, and uh, that's all we do with our onions and our celery and our chicken broth. Now you want the, I said five minutes, but probably it'll be closer to 12 or so because you want it to boil and you want that onions and celery to be tender. You don't want it to be raw. So you'll let all that cook down as you go and let it get good and... Uh, and soft. So probably about, why don't you say, Mom, 12 minutes? 10 or 12, she said. So, this is the, we're about at halfway. We do that is because you don't have to bake the bread and the dressing so long. After. I don't know if y'all can hear her or not, but she said the reason we do it is you don't have to bake it as long. So if you get those onions and celery tender in the microwave for about 12 minutes, um, you don't have to bake it near as long. And it, it also marries all those flavors together because you got your poultry season in there. You got your chicken uh, gravy, which just makes it creamier. And you got your chicken broth. Now, that chicken broth we save throughout the year. And you can't keep it, I wouldn't keep it over three or four months, but we make dressing usually a couple, three times a year. But uh, that's from when we make. Uh, other things with chicken and we boil it like dumplings and stuff you know you don't use all your broth put you some we use our old um, salad dressing the plastic jars they're wonderful for keeping broth in um, and put them in the freezer put the lid right back on it put it in the freezer and let it freeze and then we have that to, to use and then we throw it in the garbage when we get through with it so uh, that's quick and easy so give us just about 10 more minutes on this mixture and then we'll bring it back and we'll show you how to stir all this up put it together and get ready for a pan we won't put it in the pan tonight we'll put this in the refrigerator and we'll bake it in the morning we don't want to bake it tonight but we want it ready to go we'll put it in the pan that we're going to bake it in have it ready to go in there keep it in the refrigerator overnight set it out first thing in the morning let it get kind of room temperature and then put it in the oven and you're ready to go with some good dressing it's been there five minutes it's got a few more minutes to go. Okay, the uh, mixture is out. You can see there it has the uh, plastic wrap over it and that domed up in the microwave and kept basting itself. Now look at all this wonderful steam. We're gonna pull this away from you. Look at that. It's Ooh. good and hot. The celery is tender and the onions will be tender too. And that's in there about 12 minutes. And uh, you can just see all the goodness 
in it. Look at that. Now it's going to look that color because of the sage and the poultry season, but that's fine. Your dressing will it'll be good. That's that's the color you want. The biscuits are cool now, so they won't clump. They'll they'll keep a good. Um, uh, they'll crumble up good. Now you see I didn't crumble that at all. I'm not going to crumble this cornbread. Uh, it's fine. Mama used to stand and do this forever. Didn't you, Mama? Yeah. And it took me a time or two to convince her. Mama, you don't have to do all that. Well, don't put all that in. Put some of it, but don't put it all because I don't know how much broth we'll have. Okay, go ahead. Pour your broth. Oh. Ooh. All right, so we'll start adding the cornbread. Get that cornbread in there. Get that all mashed up. Mmm. Dear goodness, it smells like Thanksgiving in this house. It smells like Thanksgiving. It's wonderful. And you can see how that's just mashing up into mush. You all know how cornbread does, uh, or biscuits, either one, if they get in your coffee, or <laughs> if they get in, if you put cornbread in milk, it'll all crumble up. You can see how it's all going well there. This is a whole pound of biscuit and a whole pound of cornbread. Mama used to take the cornbread and she'd put it in your hands and she'd roll it, roll it, roll it, make little fine crumbles. And yeah. uh, takes a while, though, at the moment. Yeah, it takes a pretty good while. But this will all melt away. We, I worked in a restaurant for a long time, and we would use our leftover cornbread muffins to make this, and we'd put whole muffins in there. And I thought, I know you don't have to stand and do it fine. I've done it the other way. So, uh, taught me how. That juice will just dissolve that all away. Better hold out because I, I think, think you're I'm, getting too I much. I think, think I'm running out of juice. Okay. Now, normally, Thanksgiving time, we would do two pounds of cornbread, and she would make cake pans full of biscuit bread, and we would do a bowl bigger than Mama. <laughs> a bowl is it's about this big, big stones to a bowl. I have made it so deep before that uh, you'd have to deep down in it and do half of it and then deep down to get to the dip down to get to the bottom. So this looks like a mighty little bit of dressing. <laughs> I still think it's more than we thought, Mama. Yeah, it's more than we thought. You want to stir up Mama's, My sure Mama's hands getting weak. <laughs> Mama's hands getting weak. <laughs> Oh, See Lord. how I talk him into doing stuff. <laughs> you don't have to talk me into it. I just do it. Anything you ask me to do, I can do. I want to do it. I hope that ain't making too much noise. If we made dressing, he's talking about my oldest sister. She wanted this dressing. And if we made egg salad, she wanted An egg, egg salad. salad. What else? Her birthday is on um, Halloween. Halloween. So for Halloween, we uh, we always have our Better Circumstance party. Before Halloween. The week before Halloween. So that was always her birthday night too. And we'd always make sure we had egg salad. And uh, that's what she wanted. And then anytime we made dressing, we'd see that she got dressing. Now see how that all mushed up? And you didn't see us having to fill with crumble, 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 crumble. So there's what you have. Look at that beautiful dressing. Some people don't like the crust in it. They only use the middle parts, but I like that crunch. Well, even it in my dressing. Crunchy, it's a, I mean, it's got that flavor. That, yeah, brown flavor to it. I think it flavors it good. But once you stir it in that hot, you know what? I really think, Mama, you called it just in time. I think I did too. Because I think this is perfect for uh, consistency wise. Yeah. I know when I was stirring it, it felt like it's getting all the juice was getting for, absorbed up. For broth to uh, 
to cornbread. Now, I do know there's not enough sage in this. I can tell by the look of it and I can I, I, the, the way it looks. We put one tablespoon, if you'll remember, in, um, in the bowl. Good. And I put about a half a teaspoon then. And it may need a little bit more poultry seasoning. I'm not sure. But you can tell by looking. If you make it enough, if you make it enough years, I guess, you will learn. There's not much poultry seasoning left. You will learn the way it looks and what you think it needs and you can tell cooking by eye I call it mama just put about a teaspoon of poultry seasoning in it, in it while ago and I'm putting about another half because actually we're out you know what I'm just gonna finish that off because there's not enough to close the lid for <laughs> mama Put poultry seasoning on your list. I'm sure you got another one up there. Now, if you uh, were to over um, use cornbread or something and you didn't have enough, seem too dry to you, you can always put another cream of chicken soup in here. Or we have used and would use again cream of celery soup uh, because you got celery in here just to give it a little bit more liquid. But this seems to be just about perfect. Mama, you did good. My hand flew up and dropped. Your hand, you are, whoa, whoa, whoa. Was just at the perfect moment. Because I'm going to pronounce this consistency good and ready to go. What do you think, Mama? I think we still made... A little more than we need for tomorrow's lunch for two people. I think our, what is old saying, our eyes was bigger than our bellies. <laughs> but don't fear, this will be good frozen. You can freeze this up. Mama uh, puts it in um, pie pans, and because she likes it thin, so she'll put it in a pie pan and uh, put saran wrap over it, put aluminum foil over it, put it in the in the uh, freezer bag, and then she'll put it in the in the freezer and then she'll get it out for lunch one day when she's really in the winter I'll come home and uh, or, I'll when we have fried or when we have fried chicken I'll come home uh, the evening and I'll come by here and I'll say mmm somebody's had dressing she's I had me this little bit of chicken gravy and dressing that's what I was wanting so sometimes mama wants Thanksgiving before Thanksgiving too mama you gonna taste this we've not tried it for salt Everything in here is cooked. You don't have to worry about it. Raw dressing was my dad's favorite thing in the world. And he would always say, you all ruin it by cooking it once you just eat it raw. Because really, there's nothing raw in it. We didn't put raw Come over here, Mama. Mama stands over there, and y'all think she's in another room. She's right here. <laughs> Take your bite of it. You taste first. Mmm. You want me to get messed up, huh? I think it's pretty good. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Real good? A nice bit of poultry season you put in there might have been a higher to me. <laughs> she always says that. Mama always thinks I put too much season in everything, if you'll notice. Mmm. Didn't overcook the celery in the microwave. No. You see it got a little it's crunch. Got a, but it's tender. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's got too much of anything. Mama, I think it's a good run. Don't need any salt. We didn't put any salt in it. Mm -mm, don't need any. I don't need any salt. We put uh, well, my chicken broth. The chicken, the chicken broth that she put in there had salt, and so does the chicken um, soup. soup that she put in there. Both of those things had salt in them, so that's enough. <laughs> Mama, I ain't. <laughs> needs more liquid, I believe. There we go. We'll. Fix the turkey if we need to. We can take a little broth off the turkey. Or I may have a smaller jar of chicken broth in the freezer. It doesn't need anything. It, it no, could dry anything. out. Uh, it could dry out. But what we're going to do with this now is we're going to put it in the in the pan. No, I don't have room in my refrigerator now. Well, where are you going to put this, Mom, in a bowl? I'm going to give you a Ziploc freezer bag. Oh, you're going to put it in the bag? And it'll set in on top. So in the so morning we'll put it in our pan and we'll put it in the oven and let it be baking. It doesn't have to bake. Uh, Mom, how long you bake yours after everything is oh, done? So, uh, bake it till it gets brown. Just bake it till brown. 
So about 20 minutes like you would cornbread, 25 minutes in the oven, and you're done. Folks, this is Southern Cornbread Dressing. And when you're filling up your bags, I probably fill it a hundred times every time I go. Turn your bags down so food won't get into your runners. So I'm going to let Johnny do all the work. Is that what the word you were looking for? Well, I'm going to let you get that up. So let me make this work. So what you're saying, Mom? Yeah. Why have you? I can't get some benefit, <laughs> benefit out of you. That's right. And that's it, folks. What's my favorite word to say, honey? What? That's when people don't work. <laughs> They're so trifling. Trifling? Yeah. Mama says that word. Don't be trifling. Don't look trifling. Don't look lazy. She don't like Johnny's lighter. bad habit of sweeping with one hand. And to me, that's so lazy looking. <laughs> I'm tall. It's different for tall people. Looking lazy is what it says to me. Oh, mama. He's too lazy to use both hands. Too lazy to use both hands. I don't have to use both hands. <laughs> I use one hand to, for the for the dust pan and one hand for the broom. I can work at Disney World. Go around. You know how they come around sweeping? That's why I sweep. I just sweep like this and get my pan. Mama don't like that. She wants me to sweep like this, do the whole house, and get a big pile. And after I get a big pile, then sweep it up. I do mine as I go. I said, Mama, it all gets done, and I do it as I go. She don't like that. Because it ain't the way she does it. Mama, what are you doing? Mama, what are you doing? Nothing. She's over there uh, getting the last little bit of that out on her finger. You ain't supposed to be to I'm a tattletale. Yeah, I think we overdid it. You well, no, actually, I don't think we did. Look here. Now that it's in here. We won't put it that thick. Not Mama and I would. Mama don't like it thick. Mama likes it real thin. But now, that's about right. That's about a nine by nine. And it's about that thick. So we did about right, Mama. That'll be lunch and a leftover for supper. And that'll be good. So there it is. Dressing for tomorrow's lunch. Ready to go. Put that in the pan. And um, and I guess, if, I don't know, but I guess, that's the smallest amount of dressings ever been made here. Because <laughs> even last year when it, COVID was on, we did it for Thanksgiving. We made a big old... We had two fans. We had a big old bunch of it, and we gave it away, and we ate it, and we froze the sun. So, yeah, I guess that's the least amount of dressing we've ever made here. There's the first time for everything, isn't there, Mama? Yeah. All right, Mama, that'll fit in your refrigerator. I can lay it on top of that other, and then I'll just lay it on there. All right, folks, that's it. And this other cornbread, don't you worry, it ain't going to go to waste. It's going to get some milk on it maybe tomorrow or sometime or something. It's crumbled up a little bit, but I'm going to put it in the bowl and have it ready to go. I'll put it in a Tupperware bowl and tomorrow pour some milk over and we'll eat it for lunch. You probably won't eat it tomorrow. You? Or the next day. Come on over, Mom. I can't keep her in this camera. Oh, goodness. I can't keep her on this side. <laughs> I can't work right here. There ain't nothing more to work with. I'm going to have to get a camera person so they can follow you around. Oh, no. I'd have to get an Olympic runner to keep <laughs> up with you. You're crazy. I don't have a joke tonight about dressing or nothing. Maybe I'll have something tomorrow. I don't know. Now. Say it over and over so you'll say it in your sleep. <laughs> say what, Mama? The joke so I might could learn it. Can you think if I say it over and over you'd learn it? Well, if you went down sitting in your recliner for a few minutes and dozed off, you might speak it You're out thinking right? I'm going to talk in my sleep is what she's saying. I was hoping. I'm talking in my sleep. Already. How do you know? I ain't never heard nothing. Your daddy talked in here, so I figured just like him. I don't think I do, Mama. All right, folks, so tomorrow we got a turkey breast. We'll get up in the morning. We'll put uh, butter and sage, poultry seasoning on that. I not poultry. I've probably got another bottle of poultry seasoning. you got some more, Mama, I'm sure. Somewhere. And uh, we'll put that in the oven and we'll bake it probably about three hours. 
and uh, let it marinate good and uh, we'll put this dressing in there we'll have it we'll try to come back tomorrow and show you the finished product uh, once we bake it all up if we um, we'll put it in the comments on this video or uh, we'll do a separate video and show you tomorrow uh, just when we finish it up getting ready to sit down with it maybe might even come on live who knows we'll see so uh, I want to eat fast so we don't talk don't talk long tomorrow. <laughs> she said, don't you hold me up. I want good hot dressing and gravy. And a few mashed potatoes, not many. She'll get, we'll feed her and it'll be good and hot, I promise. <laughs> we'll bless it and let you eat while I'm talking, Mama. That sounds like a plan. All right, we're going to say good night now. And we're going to go. I'm going to finish my cup of coffee. I guess this will be all the coffee I'll take today. Yeah, it's getting kind of late. It's, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know when this video will show, but it is Saturday evening. We may not get this video on until tomorrow. Or uh, the next day. <laughs> it's cool to what we do tomorrow. You know, if you eat turkey and dressing and all of that, it makes you real sleepy. I'll oh. probably put this uh, put this on separate, and then we'll do... Uh, we use it on Sunday. We have Southern Sunday luncheon. And I come on and show you all what we got going on for lunch that day, if we have something good. And uh, so we may do Southern Sunday luncheon tomorrow live and show you the finished product of this. And um, I might show you this video prior to that. But anyhow, whatever we do, it'll be fine. You all have a great evening. Make you some memories. Find you something good to eat. And uh, I guess that's all. Say good night, Mom. Well, I'm going to tell them have a wonderful holidays if everybody... Not yes. everybody gets off on Monday, but a lot of people do. But let's yes. remember the doctors and the nurses and all the people that takes care of the sick. They don't get off like everybody else. So yeah. let's remember all and all the And the sick first responders and all yeah. that. There's a lot of folks out there working to keep America going. And we appreciate each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the military. Especially I mean, remember all the military, please. And uh, just count your blessings name on one by one but we um we are thankful be much in prayer still for the folks from the flooded areas uh, our hearts go out to them we think about them every day and you see stuff on the news it's just heartbreaking and remember all those lost lives and let's remember all those in afghanistan and let's remember all the military that are out in the world keeping the world safe for us so, uh, you kind of kind of feel guilty going on with your normal life and the way you do and and people in the shape they're in, but you've got to keep pushing and going. That's how we survive as much as we do. Let's remember all the sick. Remember Mama Sue. Um, she's yeah. doing better. She got some liquid, so she put on her post so that she's doing better. And so let's just continue to lift her up in prayer. And uh, everyone that's sick, we have so many of y'all that bring in prayer requests, and we just want to remember all of y'all too. We, we really do. Y'all are mentioned in our prayer request and our prayers often. So. Y'all have a great evening. Found you something good to eat. Enjoy the rest of this evening. It's still sunshiny. It's still pretty. Daylight will be for several more hours, you know, before long. 4.30 or 5, it'll be getting dark here. I don't know what it is like at your place, but here it gets dark early in the winter. So that won't be too many days away. So anything else, Mama? No. Just good night and God bless you and so. Bye, y'all. Good night, Mama. <laughs>